Welcome back everyone to Operation Lone Ranger. This is Global War 1936 and we are starting turn 15 for National Spain and Germany. Uh, the year is 1943 and we are in July. All right, so let's start out with National Spain. Uh, not much to do here. Uh, we're basically just gonna turtle up here in Galicia Leon and we'll just do our recruitment roll and hope that we hit. So it's going to be at a three or less. Oh, nice, we got it. Oh, that's desperate, desperately needed. We are going to take um, two militia. Oh man, that's huge. Now, if we were more on the offensive, then I might elect to take a uh, infantry. But since we're kind of uh, turtled up and on the defensive, um, I think two militia is going to be better for us. Okay, let's go to uh, Germany here. Uh, we'll start with tech. And um, we get to add one more to the board, and that's going to be airborne. So hopefully we can finish off advanced artillery this turn. Uh, and then we also have improved construction and advanced submarines. And uh, so I got them all here, lined up and ready to go. See what we get. Oh boy. I don't think we hit anything. We got a lot of sixes and then a one. That is all failures, guys. That is bad. I think that's the worst tech turn that we've had is Germany. All right, uh, so let's move on to uh, purchases. Got quite a bit there on the board lined up. So, of course, our fortification that's going to go into Denmark. We get that free fortification for the Atlantic Wall. Uh, we've got uh, five militia. Lind leasing a mountain infantry to Nationalist Spain. We're going to purchase a mountain infantry ourselves that's going to go into Romania. We've got two, uh, four mechanized infantry, two advanced mechanized infantry, two Tigers, one jet fighter. Got a um, militia upgrade. That's going to go into Norway. And then two regular infantry. Uh, the mountain infantry is going to go to Romania. And I think the jet fighter we're going to put into Romania as well. Um, and then we'll kind of figure out all these guys here for the most part, are going to go on the Eastern Front. So we'll figure out where to disperse them. I imagine the Tiger tanks will probably go at, at the minor factory there in Oral Kursk, and then we'll probably put uh, two mechanized up there with that infantry. Um, and then we'll kind of figure out the rest. I imagine the two... SS Advanced Mechanized will go into Warsaw. Um, but that's it for purchases. Uh, let's go on to combat movement. Uh, we are going to start out attempting strategic bombing into London. Um, now, let me second... Let me think about this again because they have six fighters that they can intercept uh now the rule here is that until you research and complete radar technology you're limited to only three intercepting fighters but britain has research radar we have as well so we can scramble or have fighters intercept strategic bombing raids um, with an unlimited amount. So now that that comes to mind, I'm kind of rethinking my decision here. So we do have long-range aircraft, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So getting to London, one, two, three, four, five, six is not going to be a problem. Um, we could send in these jet fighters, we would have three jet fighters and three regular fighters, 
against their six regular fighters. So that actually gives us the advantage. Um, yeah. I think we are going to do that. I don't know if the Americans can... Now that I think about it, I don't know if the Americans can scramble their fighters. Let me look that up real quick. Because we're doing a, a raid against the British, so I don't know. Interception combat. Wow, that was lucky turning right to it. <laughs> um... See, the same rules apply as scrambling ability. So, it might be over here in combat movement phase. And no, it's not. Okay. Um, let's see. Scrambling into combat. Air bases allow its owner. Oh. Units present from an aligned with an owner. Nations aligned with an owner. Huh. Oh, okay. There are two German fighters, two Italian fighters in northern Italy. Italy has not developed radar technology. The German and Italian players decide to scramble both German fighters and just one Italian fighter. So, well, the United States has radar too, so they would be able to, I would imagine, they would be able to unleash theirs as well. Because in this example, Germany and Italy are scrambling. Um, I'm thinking that we can. The same limitations as scrambling apply. All right. Okay, so since the United States has, um, since the United States does have radar, they can scramble or use both guys to intercept. Now, let's say that they didn't have radar. Um, they would only be able to scramble up to three. Um, but because the UK has radar, maybe they can scramble an unlimited amount up to three themselves. Let's go back to scrambling. Uh, let's see... Well, here in the example, so it just says Italy has not developed radar technology. Well, what about Germany? Because the problem here is that the UK is likely going to intercept with four all four of their fighters 
I mean, obviously it doesn't matter because the U.S. has radar as well, so we can scramble all six. But I'm just wondering, like, in the event, let's say that the U.S., if the U.S. does have radar but Britain doesn't, then I imagine that only a total of three could scramble because it's based upon the nation that's being attacked. So if the UK didn't have radar, then but the US did, then we would have to use the UK's technology. So because they don't have radar, we could only scramble a total of three combined between the two nations. Um, but because the UK does have radar... We can scramble an unlimited amount. Um, if the U.S. didn't have radar, I guess it wouldn't really matter. Because here in Britain, we're using British radar. I mean, that makes logical sense to me. So the U.S. technology doesn't matter. It's completely negated. So in the Italian example, I guess it was Italy... Italian units that were being attacked. And so the only thing that matters is whether or not Italy has radar or not. Um, if they did have radar, then they could scramble an unlimited amount. Okay, so we're going to scramble all six fighters. We'll go ahead and resolve this, get it out of the way. And the Germans are going to come with... Two jet fighters, two regular fighters. Um, this other fighter from Paris and this jet fighter, so that's three and three. And then they're going to send in a medium bomber and also a strategic bomber, and we are going to bomb London. All right. Let's get these on the board. Now, there's only one round of combat. So, um, the fighters here are going to be... All of these fighters are going to be at a three. Except for the jet fighters, they're going to be at a five. Now, keep in mind that the bombers, a medium bomber is at a one. Strategic bomber is also going to be at a one. So they do get rolls. And then the jet fighters are going to be at a five. All right, so this is what it looks like for interception. And... Um, you can tell the interception value by looking here at the um, the square red box with the red number in it. So strategic bombers at a one, medium bombers at a one, um, heavy strategic bombers defend at a two during interception. Okay. Uh, we'll go ahead and roll for, uh, let's see, how should we do this? We'll go ahead and roll for the, um, I think you're supposed to roll it all at the same time, but that's a lot of dice. We'll roll for the uh, bombers. And they miss. We're going to roll first for the defenders and see if they get any hits. So that's going to be six out of three. Wow, they only get one hit out of all that. Pretty crazy. All right. And then we get three out of three. No hits. Wow. 
And then uh, we get a three and a five. And we get a hit too. So it ended up being one for one. Um, we'll lose a fighter and then they'll lose a British fighter. All right, so at this point, the fighters go back home. They're done with escorting the bombers. The bombers are free to go to the factory and attempt their strategic bombing raid. Um, and the uh, the factory has an inherent uh, AA gun, and he'll get to fire one per attacking bomber. So we'll get two shots at the bombers. And they will be at a three or less. If we had heavy strategic bomber technology, that would reduce the roll to a one for the uh, AA gun. But uh, we don't have that, so we are going to have to endure flak fire at a three or less. All right, for um, damage to London, we get three D6 die. We get one for the medium bomber and then two for the strategic bomber. So. We're gonna roll all these at the same time. All right, so the AA guns miss. There are no hits there. And this is the amount of damage that we do to the factory, which is quite a bit. That one kind of hurts us, but uh, we do get 11 and we get 12. So we do 12 points of damage to the factory in London. And that will do it for the strategic bombing raid. And we're going to put the uh, damage markers here on this factory. <clears throat> and now the, the planes fly back home. Should be able to grab all these. There we go. So the uh, medium bomber and the strategic bomber will go back into Paris. Along with one jet fighter. And then, yeah, we'll just keep one jet fighter in there. And then Western Germany will have two regular fighters and two jet fighters. That way they can protect Berlin as well. Or... Um, Eastern Germany, but I imagine that their strategic bombing raid, they won't do that. Okay. And then these fighters will come back. Now, with, you know, during the, the British turn, if they wanted to conduct strategic bombing raids, say on Western Germany or Berlin or even Paris if they wanted to, um, do they have long-range aircraft? They don't have long-range aircraft yet. So, yeah, that might not be a good idea. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, they're not going to be able to make it. Um, so these fighters, these American fighters will go back into southern England, and then these guys will go back into London. All right. So that's all for that combat there in the Western Front. Um, and that's pretty crippling for Britain because they only have 25 to spend next turn. So, yikes. That's, um, that's almost half of their IPP just gone. All right, um, <clears throat> so here on the Eastern Front, oh man, we've got, um, let me see here. All of these guys can blitz, so these guys, we're going to try and surround Stalingrad, or should we just go straight in and try to attack? Oh, man.
He has 15 units there. We do have a decent Air Force. Do we bring these guys down? I feel like we have to. Hmm. Oh, man. I don't know if we can take Stalingrad with just all of this. Well, these four infantry here aren't going to be able to make it into Stalingrad. So that, that makes me think that we should wait until next turn and just try and surround Stalingrad. Because even if they... Produce, the maximum units they can produce here is five. But if we attack now, that's four less units that we can attack with. Next turn, we gain four more units and possibly this cavalry here. So... And maybe this other cavalry as well. We could rail this guy. We might rail this guy instead. Well, that's not going to do us any good. Because he wouldn't that wouldn't put him in a position to be able to attack next turn. So we would have to send this guy up here to Kamenskaya or to or here and then be able to use him in the battle to kind of even out the numbers. So maybe that's what we do. Yeah. I just think we would take more losses. We have an airborne. They would get an AA shot against our airborne. At a three, I think it's at a three or less. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Wow. That's tempting. Yeah, let's attack Stalingrad. Let's be aggressive. Of course, first we're going to have to go through Tula Lipitsk and then blitz into Stalingrad. So this army comes over and Tula Lipitsk attacks these two guys. Um, we will go ahead and get them over there. Those fighters can follow Blitz, so we're good there. Um, everybody but these two infantry and this one uh, air transport is going to come down. Oh, crap. He can't make it into Stalingrad. Never mind. So he's going to have to stay there. All right, change of plans. So everybody but these guys here. Um, so all of these units that have a movement of two will come over one, two, take Kamenskaya in western Kazakhstan. We are going to surround Stalingrad. Try and cut them off. Oh, dang it. I 
needed to get two of these. We take Kamenskaya and Western Kazakhstan. They're not worth anything. Um, we will send... Trying to think about what to do with these guys here. Tempted to bring them into here. Yeah. That way I don't have to take any casualties from that card. These guys can't attack here into Tula Lipitsk, so I'm going to do that. That's worth one. And then instead we're going to blitz into here. Of course, the four infantry is going to have to stay there. All right. Um, unfortunately, Tula Lipitsk is a river crossing. So these guys are going to be a minus one. Well, they'll get boosted by two self-propelled artillery. So two of them will get boosted back to a two. But it is a river crossing. Now, um, where is my mechanized? Mechanized. So mechanized are to two. Two Tiger Tanks will be at a 7. And this is just for the first round of combat. Um, these three medium armor are going to be at a 5. Artillery is not susceptible to um, river crossing. They, of course, just shoot over the river. So they don't have to deal with it. Um... And then we have our jet fighter at an 8, and then a tactical at a 7, and a regular fighter at a 6. All right. Let's roll some dice. So we do have two artillery first strike at a 3. No hits. We have a jet fighter at an 8. That's a hit. We have a tactical and two tiger tanks at a seven. And that's the hit that we needed. And then he's got two defenders at a four. Does he get a boost from river crossing? Uh, no, he does not. Okay. Um, river. Yep. Okay. He's got uh, two defenders at a four. Oh, he gets two hits. Glad I brought those infantry along. That's exactly why I did that. Oh, man. All right, so we lose two infantry. He loses two infantry. Well, that was less than ideal, but it is what it is. Okay. Get these guys back on here. Of course, the two infantry, they're uh, oh, oh, they're just going to stay there in Tula Lipitsk. They can't move any further. Oh, and of course, the planes, they will have to go back as well. So we're going to have to put them back. 
So the planes will fly back to, hmm, Oral Kursk. These two infantry will stay in Tula Lapisk. And th these guys will blitz on ahead to Saratov, which is worth three. So we get a total of four IPP from that. Okay. And now we have Stalingrad surrounded. Um, that's going to be all the combat moves that we do. No, it's not. We're going to strategic bomb this factory in Moscow. Forgot about that. Might as well, since give the medium bomber something to do. Um, so he has a defense at a three or less, and then we get one D6 die. Oh, he shoots us down, but we still do damage, all right? So, um, you know, I think in Axis and Allies, the AA gun gets to shoot first, and then if the strategic, you know, if there's a hit, the strategic bomber is lost, and he doesn't get to conduct his bombing raid. In this game, they both roll at the same time, and the damage is assessed from there. So, and neither is negated. So, um, we do four points of damage, and he shoots us down, which sucks because that medium bomber is worth more than four IPP. And I think it's worth more than what the amount of damage that we've done to him. So, but at any rate, at least we, uh, do something better than rolling a one. All right. I do think that's going to be all of the combat moves. Now we get to do some non-combat fun. And then place some units. And we got to, oh yeah, we got to remove this guy. He's shot down. Can't forget that. Okay, non-combat moves. Um, hmm. We're going to move this cavalry up 1-2 into Kamenskaya. This cavalry, one, two, into Dunitz Kuban. This guy's gonna rail to Dunitz Kuban. From the Crimea. Um, we have one more rail. So one from Kiev will come over to Dunitz Kuban. And then this infantry here is going to come up one into eastern Ukraine. And I think that's going to be it. Just gonna double check here. One medium armor is going to come down one, two, and a two little pitsk.
Um, Okay. All right. I think that's going to do it. Let's uh, place some units. So we have our militia upgrade and our fortification. Go ahead and place that. So this guy will go here in uh, Norway. And then... This fort will go here into Denmark. Mm. Let's see, what do we want to place next? Um, let's grab the militia. And the mountain and the jet. So the mountain and the jet are going to go into central Romania. Okay. Uh, militia. We're going to place... One more into Belgium, one more into the Netherlands, and then three militia will go into Paris. We're running out of room here on this unit card. So that's six infantry, three militia in Paris. And let's see, what else do we have here? Two infantry. They will go into... I'm tempted to put them into Paris, actually. But I think I'm going to put them into Western Germany instead. Just so we have a little bit more defense there. And then let's see what we want to do with these guys here. So the two Tiger tanks are going to go into Oral Kursk. The two SS advanced mechanized infantry are going to go into Warsaw. Oh, yeah, this jet fighter is going to move up one, two, three into Oral Kursk. That's fantastic. So we can get a chip and use that sculpt instead of that technology marker for the other guy. Forgot to move that jet. So we have two jets in Oral Kursk now. And then this jet will go into Central Romania and replace this guy. Okay, uh, this other SS will go into Warsaw, that's two, and then, oh, we have four regular motorized. You know what, I'm going to place them in Western Germany, and I will get a 
green chip. I was unsure of where to put them, but I think we're going to keep bolstering up defenses there in Western Germany. Now, do I want to put two in Paris? Hmm. I think Paris is well defended. I think we'll go with everything in Western Germany. So it's going to be four mechanized infantry in Western Germany. All right. And I do believe that will do. Oh, we've got our Lynn Lease. Can't forget about that. So, this mountain infantry will be produced in Western Germany. And he will leave 11, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and be shipped to Galicia and Lyon. Do we have to go six? I don't think so. I think just five. Yeah. Okay. Um... All right. That will do it for Germany. Oh, wait. I got 10 IPP still to spend. <laughs> I was going to save it in case if we hit advanced artillery tech. I was going to buy two advanced artillery, but um, we didn't hit the tech. So let me spend this real quick. Um, let's buy two self-propelled artillery. I think that's what we want to go with. Too self-propelled. Ah. And those we're going to put into Eastern Germany. Okay, now that will do it for the turn. Let's collect some IPP. So, did I, I don't think I accounted for, yeah, I didn't move any of our uh, roundels on the IPP chart, did I? So uh, we got, um, Tula Lepisk and Saratov, so we need to move us up four and move the Soviets down four. So we are up to 78. Soviets are down to 29. All right, so now we collect four and six. It's 10. We collect 88 IPP. Woof, man. 50... 60, 70, 80, 1, 2, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Make sure I counted that right. So there's 50, 60, 70, 80, and then 8. 88 for next turn. All right. That will do it for National Spain and Germany, turn 15. Next up will be the common turn. Thanks so much for watching as always, and until I see you in the next video, take care. Bye-bye for now.